All right, let's go ahead and get started. If you will uh, head over to Photoshop, open up a photo with a specific subject, um, preferably, I, it really doesn't matter, it can be person, an object, um, but find one of your favorites. So let me hurry and look, see what I've got, that's not going to work. recently deleted a bunch of stuff so I gotta see what I got let's go Alaska better photos but it's not looking that way let's see what's that one We'll do that one. Okay, so first off, my photo is a CR3, which is a raw photo. Uh, I've noticed that some of you, you are capturing your photos in raw and JPEG, and that's fine. It is not necessary right now. Um, it takes up more space on your memory card and of course it uh, um, makes transferring your photos to your computer uh, it takes a little bit longer because your raw photos are uh, more um, or bigger files so when you open up a raw file in Photoshop, it's going to first open it up in Camera Raw, and here you can do some quick editing. So when I talk about editing your photos, you're just doing your basic adjustments, um, and I can do it in a lot of different ways, um, and we've talked about most of those. Uh, but I can also quickly change it to black and white, which there's not a whole lot of color. Um, I did not want to do that. So we're going to turn that off. Um, we're just going to turn off black and white. Um, I can change the color profile. Uh, when you are photographing on the back of your camera, there is some, looks like rectangles at an angle with a letter. Uh, I've had you guys set it to S. Some of yours might be set to A. Um, S is for standard. A is for auto. Um, there'll be one for L, one for P, I think one for V. So it just changes the color profile Canon's color profile is not Adobe's. So I'm going to just switch my color profile to 
landscape, it's going to make some of the colors for landscape pop out more. So I get a little bit more green showing up and the blues show up a little bit better. Um, and then when I open up light, I can see that these colors or these um, sliders have already been adjusted for Adobe Landscape uh, profile. Now, if I want to manually adjust it, I sl switch it back or do undo, and I can go back through, okay? But I'm just gonna leave it there. Um, I'm not gonna mess with anything else. Okay, so once I'm done, I'm gonna click open. If I click done, then it's just going to close the photo and it's not going to do anything. So click open. It will then open it up in Photoshop. Now, if you have a JPEG and you want to work with your photos this way, remember that it is a pixel killer. Um, come on. And so um, my raw file doesn't get changed permanently. I can always go back to the default, but uh, if you're opening up a JPEG in the uh, filter raw uh, camera raw filter, it will um, change the pixels uh, permanently. Okay. Um, so in here, we've talked about uh, a little bit about our move tool, which is the first tool, the little uh, crosshair, not crosshair, but the cross with the arrows on the ends. This is for moving objects within the uh, picture frame. Uh, the next tool is your marquee tool. And this is for selecting uh, certain areas. And we will be using uh, that for one of our demos. Anytime you draw this out, you can command D to deselect. The third tool is a lasso tool. This is another selection tool. Fourth tool down, this is my object select. But if I click and hold down on any of the tools with the white arrow, but this one in particular, I have object select, quick selection, and magic wand. When I was in college, the only tool you had here was magic wand, and it took um, a lot of patience and finesse to get it to work just right. The next tool we've talked about is the crop tool where we can physically cut out parts of the photo. The problem with doing this is you are permanently changing the uh, pixel dimensions. Um, we're not worrying about the frame tool uh, really quick, that uh, eyedropper tool, this is your color picker tool. So the down at the bottom of your toolbar uh, on the left side, you're going to see two colored boxes. Mine right now are green and brown. If I click anywhere on my photo, it is uh, picking up that color and putting it in that top or foreground color of my um, color boxes here. So the top one is foreground, the one underneath that is background. And I can swap between those two colors by pressing the X button on my keyboard or the little curved arrow next to them will do the same thing, okay? The next tool that we have talked about is the healing brush, and we use this. Uh, I showed this in um, Staple City. And if we look, we've got click and hold on it. We've got spot healing, removal, healing brush, patch tool, content aware, red eye tool. We're not going to get into all those right now. Uh, the next one is your paintbrush. It's a paintbrush. Okay. And then we've also talked about the clone stamp tool. Uh, which, is, which is when we can clone an area. So if I want another uh, 
well fin here. I hold option, click on that, and then come over here and paint in my well fin. And now we've got a couple of wells that are doing synchronized swimming. Okay. But that is a pixel killer. So if you look on my layers panel, I've only got the background layer, which means that this whale tail is permanently in there. Of course, I can Command-Z to undo that. I can make a blank new layer and paint or clone that onto my new layer uh, with a few adjustments. Okay, we are going to make a um, a mandala. Anybody raise a hand who knows what a mandala is or has ever heard the term? Okay. Anybody know? Can uh, describe a mandala? Okay. A mandala is a geometric, tip, well, traditionally, uh, kind of a geometric type circular or radial design um, that starts in the middle and extends outward. We see these uh, common in things like um, sand painting. Um, let's go um, mandala sand painting. Okay, so it it's a um, circular design or centripetal design. You start in the center, you work out um, each of traditionally uh, each of these areas are about being in touch with oneself and um, eventually uh, with the world. Okay. Now, various cultures uh, have used mandalas in um, sand painting and in other um, formats. Uh, nowadays, we see mandalas um, in a lot of things, especially stupid adult coloring books. Okay. Um, not the most uh, original. They all start looking the same to me, so they become trite, um, kind of a cliche, if you will. Okay, so mandala. We're going to create a photographic mandala. So to do this, we need to do a couple of things. First off, come up here. In Photoshop, click on Photoshop, and we're going to go into our settings, and we're going to come down to, I got to remember which one, um, Guides, Grid, and Slices. Okay. So about uh, three-fourths, two-thirds, three-fourths of the way down, Guides, Grid, and Slices, and you're going to get a window. Mine opened up on my other screen. Go to settings, guides, grids, and slices. And that is not the place. Um, maybe it's under general. No. Tools. No. Nope. 
Okay. I apologize. It's been a year since I've had to find this. It's called a search. Oh. Okay, go into tools. I think this is the one. Uh, under options in the first column, it says show reference point when using transform. Make sure that is checked and then click OK. What we're trying to do, if I click or if I do the shortcut, Command T. Sorry, I got to unlock my background. Command T. I should, you should have this little crosshair design. Uh, or not design, but crosshair um, thing. thing. Yep, yeah. in the center. Did that turn it on for you guys? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Command T. Command T. We're not we're not changing anything yet, but com oh. okay. So to get to preferences again, we're going to go up here. Click on Photoshop, go to Settings, choose Tools. It's because you're in full screen mode, maybe? Let me see. You're number 14. Okay. So just make sure that show reference point when using transform is checked. And then click OK. All right. Um, really quick, this has nothing to do with you guys. I've got this little, I don't know if it's something on my lens or a bird, but it's too small to really know. notice. So I am going to... Get rid of it. Okay. So it's not as distracting. All right. Now what I want to do is create a new document. So we're going to have up two tabs here. So I'm just going to go file new. And in this new window, we're going to ignore our recent save photo, all of that. And we're just going to come over here. We're going to call this, the name is Mandala. Yes, you do. Oh, hit escape on your keyboard. It's because you're still trying to transform. Just to cancel a transformation, you always use escape. In fact, if things are grayed out, that's the first key I hit escape just to cancel anything that's going on that I might not be aware of. Okay, um, my units of measurement, I don't think in terms of pixels, so I'm going to go to inches. And we're just going to keep this relatively small. So 8, 8 for your width, your height. And your resolution, let's put it at 150. That way you can zoom in a little bit, uh, but it's not going to be that big of a file. Typically, if you are posting images online, you would want your resolution to be at 72. And if you are printing them, you would want your resolution to be 300. 
That number is pixels per square inch. Um, and so 72 is the bare minimum um, for web. We're going to go with 150 just so people can see a little bit of detail. After that, it really doesn't matter what your other settings are. Uh, the defaults for Photoshop are just fine for what we're doing. Click Create. And you're going to see, um, is yours checkered or is it white? white. OK. So that's fine. Uh, mine is checkered, which just means it's transparent. OK. Um, now what we're going to do is go back to our photo tab. And we need to turn on your rulers. So command R. Okay. So command R will turn on the rulers. And by turning on the rulers, it allows us to uh, pull in guides. So if I click in my vertical ruler on the left side and drag out to about the middle, it's going to snap into place. And it's going to have this cyan um, little line. Okay. That would not be printed if I was to print my photo. It is a guide. Okay? It is not part of the photo. I'm going to click on my top ruler and drag it down about halfway. It'll snap into place once I'm there. And this is going to give me my center point. It's going to help me as I am designing this. Next thing I want to do is I'm going to choose my lasso tool, but I don't want my regular lasso. I'm going to click and hold on it, and I'm going to choose my polygon lasso tool. This will allow me to create polygon straight lined multi sided shapes. So I'm going to click in the center. And really, it doesn't matter. I can click anywhere. In fact, I'm going to. I'm going to click here on that tail well. I'm, I'm going to select a part of this picture that um, has the most action, interest, or something like that. Okay. Now, I'm, going to, I'm just drawing out a triangle of any kind of a triangle. Just a three-sided polygon, guys. Um, when I get back to the beginning, my first click, I'm going to see a little circle appear in the bottom right corner of my cursor. That tells me I'm at my starting point. So if I click, it is going to finish off that shape, and I will see the dashed moving lines, or as Photoshop, or Adobe calls them, um, marching ants. Okay, that term was coined way back in the 90s uh, because uh, one of the um, programmers for Photoshop thought that it looked like ants on a picnic um, marching around. Okay. All right. Now I need to command C. This is to copy. We should all be familiar with command or control C, depending on your computer brand. Uh, and then I'm going to head back over here. And my rulers are still on. I'm going to drag out my guides to the center. Again, mine are kind of hard to see because of the checker, but they will do well enough. And then before you go to break, command V to paste it in. Command V to paste it in. Oh, I know why. Nope, I don't. Copy.
You gotta be kidding me. Yeah. get back um so if you look and yours is going to be similar i imagine my triangle is filling up more of my um frame so it doesn't look like a triangle anymore so this is where i need to use my transform tool so transform tools are up here in edit Hover over transform, and I've got scale, rotate, skew, distort, warp, a bunch of them. Or I can just do a free transform. I'm going to do just a free transform. And I'm going to need to zoom out a little bit. Because my photograph was using more pixels than what my little... Uh, eight inch box was using, of course, it's going to take up more space. So I'm going to grab one of these corners. I'm going to shrink it down, move it over here. I want it to fit within my rectangle or my square. And okay. I want one of those points to be at the center, one of the points of my triangle to be at the center. Now, typically, I would want the longer um, sides to uh, lead up to the point that's in the center. Okay, that just it's easier. Okay, now as I'm sliding this into place, my um, Guides are going to highlight in pink saying that my triangle is now at the center. I'm going to zoom in, so Command Plus, and I can look and see that is for sure. Once I have it, I can click the check mark up at the top or hit return on my keyboard. Okay. And to zoom out all at once, command zero, and it resizes inside there. Okay. Now, this is going off the page a little bit. I'm not worried about that right now. I'll come back to that. I am going to take this layer here, and I'm going to copy it. and paste it. Oops, wrong button. Command V is paste, All right? And it's gonna paste it back in the center. But I need to rotate this triangle. So I'm gonna come up to edit transform and rotate. And this is where that center point is going to come 
in handy. I want to move it to the point of my triangle, the one that should be in the center. And now it will rotate on that axis. So I'm going to move it to the center like my other one. And I'm going to rotate it so that it is just touching. I could overlap it a little bit if I wanted to. But I'm just going to get it to barely be touching. Something like that. Okay. And then I'm going to hit return. Now, there's an easier way to um, copy and paste a layer, and that is to duplicate. Command J will duplicate that layer. And it's going to show up. Mine shows up as layer 4 copy, and it is right over the original layer 4. So then I need to come up here to edit, transform, rotate again, move this to the point of um, rotation, rotate it. to where I want it, hit return. Now there's an even easier way. So if I go Command J, it makes a copy of my previous layer. But now I can do a, if I look under Transform, there is again. So it'll do the last thing you, you did. If I choose that, then it automatically rotates it. Command J. Now I could continue to go to transform again, but the shortcut is Command Shift T. So Command J, Command Shift T. Command J, Command Shift T. And this is why it is so important to learn your shortcuts because they will save you time. And as a professional photographer, that saves you money. Now, I start getting this really cool design, but my last one, layer 4, copy 15, is too big for that little space right there. Okay. And so if I have that in there, now I'm overlapping and my design gets messed up. So I'm going to delete that one. And I have a couple of options. One, I start all over. Okay. Two, I, which is the one that I usually opt for, is um, I start rotating these and they're going to have a slight gap. Now, if you're really good at geometry and math, go for it. Figure out the distance there. Um, and you can solve things and make the world perfect with math. I um, have tried that on here before. I'm not great at math, but I've tried. Um, and it takes more time than it's worth. So if I go Command T and I move this to my center point, my uh, axis marker, and then I start rotating these so that there's a slight gap. That might be too much. In fact, I know it is. Oops. And see, if I don't move it, you can see how it rotates at the center of that box instead of at the point where I need it to. So if that ever happens, just hit escape. It'll cancel that. Make sure that you move 
your center point. Okay. Now, if I go here and I go Command Shift T, that is too much. So I was looking for a quicker way. It didn't work. So now I'm just going to go through and eyeball this. Now, if you find that your um, little rotating point is trying to snap to a point that you don't want it to, then what you can do is go up to View, Snap, and just uncheck that. So now if I go to this one, Command T, uh, it's still trying to snap. View. Uh, I can go to snap to and turn off guides. Rotate it. Okay, so what I want you guys doing is finishing this up. We've got about 10 minutes. So finish this up. And then we're going to look at how to make it a circle design.